mì khoai tây omachi độc đáo với thịt và xương hầm cho nước súp hấp dẫn nên không thể bỏ sót ngay cả giọt súp cuối cùng mì ngon mà nước cũng ngon omachi sức hấp dẫn không thể chối từ Ever had a hard time climbing up a hill? Or had a bad fall? That's gravity. Gravity is what glues you to the ground and keeps you from floating away from it. What if one day it just stopped working and the whole world experienced zero gravity? How would your body react? Would you fly off the planet? What would happen to Earth? This is what if, and here's what would happen if gravity went away. While bouncing off the ceiling may sound fun, there'd be a lot of consequences if we lost gravity's grip on our bodies. Gravity is one of the four fundamental forces of physics. It's also the weakest, but it has the important job of holding together entire solar systems and galaxies. Even the atoms in your body exert gravity and are gravitationally attracted to the atoms of the person sitting next to you. If one day this force came to an end, would it kill you? As Einstein pointed out in his theory of relativity, gravity is not a singular force pulling things down to Earth. It's an attraction that happens between any two objects that have mass. The Earth is pulling you towards the center, the Moon pulls our oceans back and forth, and while all this is happening, the Sun is holding the Earth and the rest of the planets in our solar system in place. Every second, you're unconsciously working against the effects of Earth's gravity. Growing up on this planet, your body has adapted to pushing against the force of gravity as it constantly pulls you down. But without it, you'd start losing your bones. That's right, away from the Earth's gravity, astronauts lose at least 14% of their bone strength during a six-month stay on a space station. The same thing would happen to your muscles. And if losing your biceps doesn't scare you, think of the most hard-working muscle in your body, your heart. Every day it pumps almost 2,000 gallons of blood. To deliver blood to your brain, your heart has to push it vertically, overcoming the force of gravity. Without gravity, your heart would only supply your brain and chest with blood, not your legs and stomach. At least for a while, until your body could adjust to a new environment. You'd lose your sense of balance, too. Circulation of your red blood cells would drop. This means your wounds would take longer to heal and your immune system would weaken. But none of this would kill you. What would is the lack of air to breathe. You see, gravity holds our planet's atmosphere in place. With no force to keep it around the Earth, the atmosphere would be the first thing to float into space followed by oceans, seas, rivers, and you. Unless you were lucky enough to be inside a building that was firmly rooted to the ground, you'd take off for a lifetime interstellar vacation. Even Earth itself would break apart into chunks and drift away into space. And if there was no gravity anywhere in the universe, the same thing would happen to the sun, and to all the stars, the planets, and black holes. The entire universe would turn into a floating soup of atoms and molecules. That would be the end of the world as we know it.
If there is anything people know about Isaac Newton, it is the Apple story. But history tends to exaggerate stories. The apple never actually fell on him. It just hung alongside a daytime moon, and it inspired Newton. Maybe the force that keeps the moon in its place is the same one that makes apples fall from trees. When Nicholas Copernicus said that the Earth rotated on its axis and around the sun in a circle, he revolutionized science, but left unanswered questions. Why, then, did things fall straight to the ground? And why didn't we fly off into space? Sixty years later, astronomer Johannes Kepler asked yet another question. He had meticulously measured planets' orbits, and there was no doubt. They weren't circles, but ellipses. But why? All of this was just what he saw in the sky. There wasn't any math to explain it. Newton had forgotten about the apple and the moon while he was busy inventing calculus and theorizing about the nature of light. He even gained a rival, Robert Hooke, an already prominent physicist who disagreed with him. Some years later, for reasons still unclear, he locked himself up in his study and set off to solve the mystery of elliptical orbits of planets and satellites. He had some ideas, but he was stuck. His math didn't add up. It was against all odds, his rival Hooke who suggested a small change in one of his formulas. This drove him to work non-stop until he came up with what he needed. A set of laws that could be used to describe how objects moved. Were they planets, comets, projectiles, or a falling apple? Combining these laws, the mystery was solved. The moon wanted to travel on a straight path, and the Earth's gravity pulled it closer, making it go faster, and thus straighter, and so on. Newton had been right all along. He wrote all this in a book known as the Principia. Hooke was briefly acknowledged in it, but he felt that Newton had stolen his idea, and he was so...